talking about the, just the magnificence of the sacrifice of Christ. I mean, it's, uh, Paul said, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable. And, and I was thinking about uh, Jesus. Luke says when the time came for him to be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Now, when, when that was stated, he wasn't talking about uh, his cross. He was talking about he could have just dumped the whole thing and gone to heaven. You remember, Moses was in that place. God said to Moses, Moses, just get among his people. I'll wipe them out, and I'll raise up a few of you, a, a people that will follow me. And Moses said, Lord, what will they say of your holy name? And Jesus was in that spot. He could have made that decision right there. Uh, dump the whole thing. Go back to the Father. No. But he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Wow. It is a gospel. It is good news. Well, amen. We're looking at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to go back and recapitulate a little bit, if I may. I think that's what that word means. I read it somewhere, anyway. Uh, and just kind of catch up. Now, I'm going to say again, that if somebody has a question, now we've talked about this among the men, uh, sometimes we go over things and it goes just right over somebody's head and they want to, oh, I wish I could. Well, go ahead. If, if you got a question, something that's really bugging you, then uh, you need to send a flare up and Let's see if we can get it clarified. All right, we've been talking about, <coughs> pardon me, the trumpet judgments. And we I'm going to go back to chapter 14, maybe even chapter 11. Yeah, I'll catch up this. Uh, chapter 11, we have the two witnesses, you'll remember. And they witnessed for 1260 days. Prior to that, in verse 2, you see the temple is measured, the outer court is left out for the Gentiles to trod down for 42 months. 42 months is a Gentile term, 1260 days is a Jewish term. So they are uh, uh, addressing the same period of time. And the witnesses testify for 1260 days and then the uh, beast who comes out of the earth, the pit, that's the false prophet. You have him in chapter 13, 11, and following. And he is given power to kill them. They lay dead in the streets for three and a half days, and they have this hellish Christmas, and people send gifts to one another because they tormented these witnesses, them, constantly. And then suddenly... The life from God enters into them, and they stand on their feet, and fear fell on everybody. Now, I, I say it again, that's a classic understatement. I can imagine. I think terror would be a better word. Anyhow, I'm going to go on with it. So, in verse 12 in this chapter, I hear noises. Time for a drink of water. <laughs> it's all right. You know, my kids, when they were little, used to crawl under the seats during the service. And 
That could be embarrassing too. Uh, thank God for children. Amen. Worry not. Uh, verse 11 of chapter 11, if you would. Now, after three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them. They stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Come up here. Now, that term appears twice in Revelation, the first time in chapter 4, when you see the church being called into the heaven, the translation of the church. And from there on, the 24 elders are sitting on 12 thrones and uh, tw tw make it 24. 24 elders sitting on 12, 24 thrones and they are constantly there. And these redeemed that we talk about beyond that point are not in the church. They are redeemed out of the tribulation. They are a Con, uh, totally different body of redeemed. I'm going to say it again. For what is worth, John chapter 14, in my Father's house are many abiding places. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. So out of all these many abiding places, there's one for the church. But there's also one for redeemed Israel. There's also one for redeemed Gentiles out of the tribulation that are not in the church. Many abiding places. The Greek word is meno, and mansion's not a good translation, rendering. Okay, so you see this expression come up here. So what do we have? We got another translation. And it is at this point that the tribulation saints are taken up before the Lord. Now you've got two bodies of them that are mentioned. Back in chapter 7, you remember, first of all, carefully enumerated 12,000 out of each of the tribes of Israel, save Dan and Ephraim, for a very good reason. We won't go into it now again. And then this great multitude that John saw out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation that fourfold description of the world. It's the world, uh, four is a world number. You always see it fourfold. And these now at this point are being translated into his presence. Now, there are references in chapter 13, for example, when he describes the two beasts out of the sea, out of the earth, references to the suffering of saints. Uh, that uh, is a description of a series of events when the beast is called out. It is not in this time schedule. This is the time schedule of what God is doing in chapter 14. And so we come finally then uh, to the seventh trumpet. And back in chapter uh, 8 and 9, you remember, he said, uh, now there are three woes that are going to come. And two of them, matter of fact, the second one ends in verse 14, chapter 11. It's the two witnesses, these great woes. <coughs> Sorry. So we're looking now at the seventh trumpet in verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. Now, you come to these terminal points that are described of the second coming, and these are really rejoicing. You have this song that they sing in these next verses, and they are terminal points of the tribulation, but the Lord doesn't come. Because he's describing for you events that will take place right there at his coming. But he doesn't come yet. That doesn't happen until chapter 19. That's when that's fulfilled. So in chapter 12 then, you all still with me? In chapter 12 you have this uh, uh, historical uh, narrative of the birth of Christ. Uh, by the woman who is, let me just read verse 1, please. I'll go ahead. Uh, 
Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon and the stars under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Now, the, the, sun, the moon under her feet, I'm sorry. I'm quoting and not reading. Now, that's the same description if you go back to chapter 37 of Genesis that God gives to Joseph in a dream about his family. And they bow before him. And he tells his father. And his father defines the dream. He said, Shall in what is this that you have dreamed? Shall indeed your father and your mother and your brethren bow before you? Well, who is that multitude? Israel. Verse 1 is Israel. And she's about to give birth to a child, so the dragon, who is Satan, uh, he's well defined momentarily. Uh, uh, that he, the dragon stood before her to de devour the child, verse 4, if you allow, and his tail drew. He, uh, uh, I shouldn't do that. Another sign appeared in heaven, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, seven diadems upon his head. And by the way, there are only two people in Revelation that wear diadems. Everybody else has a Stephanos, a wreath of victory. The only two that ever wear diadems are the, the uh, Antichrist and the Christ. Now, here you have the one who gives the Antichrist his power, so obviously he's wearing a diadem. But in terms of those who are in the earth, the Antichrist and Christ. Everybody else is wearing a Stephanos. I go on. Verse 4. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven. When Satan was thrown out of heaven, he took a third part of the angels with him. Threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. No problem with who that is. Here is Israel giving birth to Jesus. I know you can put Mary in there if you want to, but it isn't Mary. It's the nation of Israel. This body of people that God called out through Abraham to bring through that line, a Messiah who would redeem the world. And this is that child. And then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God that he should feed her there for 1,260, 1260 days, Jewish. Okay, I, I want to get on. Then the... Uh, you got a war in heaven, and Michael starts it. And he throws Satan out of heaven, and he comes down to the earth having great wrath. Now, that's again an historical event. John chapter 31, Jesus looking at the crucifixion. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall Satan be cast out. John chapter 12, verse 31. Uh, Luke uh, refers to this in chapter 10. I beheld Satan, Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall. When I pause like that, I want you to finish the verse. As lightning from heaven. He was thrown out of heaven. So is he, sorry. And now uh, 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 Jude tells us uh, Satan walks about his roaring uh, Peter said that didn't he uh, Satan walks about his roaring lion seeking whom he may devour he's wandering around the earth looking for somebody to devour now he's still in the plan he isn't dead yet he's just in the earth <coughs> now there are other people who look at that differently but you're listening to me now, not other people, so just bear with me. 
So, verse 11, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And I love this phrase, and they loved not their lives unto death. I get a magazine called uh, Voice of the Martyrs, and they are. I mean, in India, the Hindus, they want to have a Hindu stand, they said. They want to kill everybody that isn't Hindu or drive them out of the land. Uh, people are dying for the name of Christ in all other parts of the world. That may come here. So brace yourself. Get a martyr's crown. I mean, being killed doesn't appeal to me. I mean, the, the act of death doesn't appeal to me. Somebody cutting my throat doesn't appeal to me at all. But it's the thereafter. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Now, there were three woes. We already talked about two. Here's the third woe. Therefore, rejoice, O heaven, and you who dwell on them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down unto you, uh, having great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time. Now, it doesn't say... Uh, 42 months or time times a half time or 1260 days it says he knows he has a short time and remember that in the heavenly scene God's attitude prevails a thousand years is as a day day is as a thousand years I don't know if everybody else sees it that way or not but devil recognizes he's done for when he flies out and his end is coming Okay, I didn't mean to labor this that long, but it's very important. So he, he's frustrated and angry that he couldn't get the child. Uh, verse 13, now when the dragon saw that he'd been cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman, Israel, who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. Some have read the United States into that. I have no idea. But he's given two wings of a great eagle and so that you might fly into the wilderness to her place. Remember back in verse 6, God prepared a place for her. So now she's going again to that place. We have two occasions when this woman fled. Historically, the first part, you can count Herod and the Romans and so on into that. But now you're looking at what uh, the snake does uh, during this last half of the tribulation. And she's secured there for a time, times, and half a time. And that's the term that Daniel uses, you remember. It is still Jewish. Now, when you come to chapter 13, you have the two beasts. One comes out of the sea, Gentile world rule leader. I don't want to labor that. Uh, the Antichrist, as we commonly know him. And he takes his seat and uh, his ten kings with him, and they uh, rule over the world, and uh, 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 they pronounce their, uh, I'm sorry, his uh, name and his number, and the, uh, his name, his number, I've got lost something out of there, I'm sorry, and uh, uh, getting old is a terrible thing, you know that. Well, actually, it really isn't. It means I'm getting closer than a bunch of you people. The name, his number, or the number of his name. That's the way it's written. Then another beast came out of the earth in 1311. That's a false prophet. He's referred to in 2 Thessalonians 2 that sits in the temple of God saying that he is God. He's in the land, Israel. He comes out of the land, if you would. <coughs> so I read verse 12, if I may, and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth, here's his ministry, 
he causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So he has been slain and resurrected. Now, we'll come to it maybe in time, Lord allowing. Remember, both of these, the beast and the false prophet, are cast alive into the lake of fire. Now, nobody goes in the lake of fire till they've had resurrection because they've got to have a resurrection body. That's why you got the great white throne judgment. That's another thing to talk. So everybody who goes in the lake of fire has gotten a body, in Paul's words, fitted for destruction. This body wouldn't last. People complain, oh, if this body went into fire, just burn up. Yes, it would. But it isn't this body that goes into that fire. It's a resurrection body that goes in that fire. It's a spirit body. There is a natural body, Paul said, and there is a spiritual body. That doesn't mean it's something you can put your hand through. He's not talking about a ghost. But he's talking about a body, a spiritual body. It is spiritual substance. We don't know anything about that. But we're going to find out. Okay. So we move on. Now, this is what I'm trying to get to. In, in chapter 14 and 15, I said we had the translation of the tribulation saints back there in chapter 11. Do you remember I said that? And when they heard, come up here, and they, he, they were received up in a cloud, not an atmospheric condition. The body of believers. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, you're familiar with it. Seeing where it comes about. So great a cloud of witnesses. That's all those faithful in the 11th chapter preceding. Body of believers. When Jesus ascended, he ascended in a cloud. He took paradise out of the heart of the earth and took it to heaven with him. Uh, that's not a resurrection. He just translated the, what Paul calls the spirits of just men made perfect. Boy, wow. Wonderful. So, in this translation in a cloud of these tribulation saints, we first have the 144,000, the first fruits unto God. Chapter 14, verse 1. Then I looked and behold a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 having their father's name written on their foreheads. And if you question whether or not that's Mount Zion in heaven, look at verse 3. And they sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures. Where are they? Yeah, before the throne of God. And the elders, that's the church, and no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. Now, uh, it's interesting to me that that, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, words, uh, lyrics of the song are not mentioned. All right, now come over with me to chapter 15, please. Remember, you got this other group, this great multitude. Out of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. Verse 15, verse 1 of 15. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having uh, the seven last plagues. For in them the wrath of God is complete. Now that's these bold judgments that were coming up on momentarily. And these seven angels are about to be given by one of the four living creatures these bold judgments to pour out on the earth. Verse 2, And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. Now, you can go back to chapter 11 and pick up or even 7 for that. Uh, not, sorry, 4. And pick up that same frame, that sea of glass that they're standing on. And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire, and those who have victory over the beast, 
over his image, over his mark, over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of God in their hands. Now, these are singing a song too, but it's not hidden. You got the lyrics, and we have sung it, as a matter of fact. Here, they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. That includes all those converted Jews in there. And the song of the Lamb. It's all those Gentiles embracing the Lamb. Standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy, and all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been made manifest. Now, that's their song. That's the song those tribulation saints are going to sing in that day. I'm sure we're going to be singing along with all that bunch. We'll see what, how that works out. Okay, so we've got these that are gathered into heaven. Now, when the judgments fall in chapter 16, these bold judgments that are poured out, the believers are in the heavens. And uh, understand again, pardon me, and, and I emphasize this for a reason, they are not the church. The church is the body of believers from uh, Pentecost and baptized by one body into the body of Christ to the translation, Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians, huh. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Lord cometh with 10, I got the wrong verse, um, the Lord come with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive, you're looking forward to that, March. We who are alive shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be in the Lord. And that word caught up is the Greek word arpazo, from which we get the word rapio, from which we get the word rapture. So don't anybody tell you the word rapture is not in the Bible. Anyhow, where was I with that? Oh. So, the saints have been translated. The church is in the presence of the Lord. The tribulation saints have been translated. And now we're going to start the bowl judgments. Chapter 16. Uh, should I start there? Maybe I ought to start with verse 7 of 15. Then one of the four living creatures uh, were uh, gave to the seven angels seven golden bowl, bowls full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from, the, from his power. No one was able to enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. So, uh, I do want to hit these. What time is it? Uh, wow. Um, well, okay, I'm, I'm going to hasten. I'm, I'm going to hasten. Yes. Okay, so I heard a loud voice, verse 1, from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go, pour out your bowls of the wrath of God on the earth, and the first went out and poured out his bowl on the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came up on the men who had the mark of the beast and who had worshipped his image. That sounds terrible. I'm sure just 
the simple statement, a loathsome sore. And it hangs on him because it shows up again a little later. Second angel poured out his bowl on the sea and it became blood as the dead blood of a dead man and every living creature in the sea died. Now I want you to think about what that would do to the economy in the world if in the sea every living creature died. Third, third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things, for they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is their just due. The King James says, for they are worthy. I like that translation better. And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. God is righteous in his judgments. He has a right to judge. He bought that on the cross. He paid for the sin of all the world in all time, past, present, and future. And as for that reason, he now is given the Father judges no man. He's committed all judgment in the hands of the Son, John 5, 22. Because of the cross, he is given the right of judge. And now, that's why you have John chapter 3. He that believes is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Not because he's a sinner. Not because he was born in Adam's sin, but because he has not believed in the Son. God has moved the basis of judgment from Adam's sin to the cross. And Christ paid for all the sin of all the world. And for that reason now, judgment is predicated on what will you do with Jesus who is called Christ. And so all the effort of man to be good, to reform, uh, to elevate himself in this world, filthy rags. Yeah, I <laughs> said. Praise the Lord. Okay, the fourth bowl. Verse 8, then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and power was given to him to scorch men with fire and men were scorched with great heat and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over the plagues. They knew who was doing it, but rather than repenting, they blasphemed his name and they did not repent to give him glory. Fifth bowl. I'm going to hit. I'm going to go through this thing. So, then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. Now I'm going to tell you something was told me by somebody who's supposed to know that just as light travels on a frequency. You guys know something about radio and transmissions and so forth. Light travels on frequency. That frequency can be reduced so low that it's darkness. And this brother I was talking to that had some knowledge of this sort of thing way beyond me, he said that frequency can get so low that you can feel it that it hurts your ears. It's actually painful. And I thought, wow. That's what he's doing right here. God is, is re, how do you say it? He is intervening in the natural laws of the world. And he can do that, can he? Because he made it. 
and they could feel the pain. All right, verse 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its waters were dried up to make a way for the kings of the east. Now, we could go back earlier and we see this great multitude that's going to ultimately invade the nation of Israel, and this is their pathway. Uh, you can look at uh, chapter 9, verse 10, you see that. Uh, and in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 44, uh, the Antichrist uh, gets tidings from the east that frighten him, and he heads back to the land. That's another story. I'm not teaching Daniel. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. I'm going to say it again. Don't put this trash in your house. Frogs. Dragons. Okay, that's just lambology. I'm sorry. They have Paul... Paul said, the idol is nothing, and the thing that sacrificed to it is nothing. But he also says, the things which the, uh, that the heathen sacrifice unto idols, they sacrifice unto demons. Behind the idol is a demon. Now I've blown it, haven't I? Some churches that get me fired... All right, verse 13, I saw these three unclean spirits come out of the mouth of the beast, dragon, false prophet, for they are the spirits of demons performing signs which go to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them together to the great day of the battle of God Almighty. And we know that is Armageddon. Now, Jesus himself enters Jack's a statement here while John is describing all of this. And he says, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Now, I didn't say they go to hell. Don't put that in there. Uh, they just find out how wretched they really are. I'm trying to get this page turned. I don't have my other. Okay. And they gathered them together in a place called in the Hebrew Armageddon or Armageddon or the Mount of uh, the Valley of the Mount of Megiddo. And finally, you have the seventh bowl poured out. I'm going to quit with this. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air. I mean, now this covers everything. The atmosphere gets this bowl. And loud voices came out of the temple of heaven and from the throne saying, It is done. Now, uh, my mother used to tell me that, that people were finished, but cake is done. Depends on what you're talking about getting finished. And this is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake. A mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since there was anyone on the earth. Wow. Wow. Now, here's the result. Now, the great city was divided into three parts. Now, I would suggest to you that's Jerusalem because it's set apart from the next two. I believe that to be Jerusalem. <coughs> and the cities of the nations fell. Those are the Gentiles. And then great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Now, 
you go back to chapter 13 and you're getting this description of the destruction of Babylon, here's where it happens. It didn't happen there. It's just how it's going to happen there. It, here you get the point at which it does happen. Then they get the, the wrath of God. Then every island fled away and the mountains were not found. Great hail from heaven fell upon men. Each hailstone about the weight of a talent. By the way, uh, there's some debate whether Roman talent, Hebrew talent, whatever. But if it's a Hebrew talent, it weighs 75 pounds. 75 pound hailstone. Some of you all have seen what just a, a baseball size hailstone can do. Golf ball size hailstone can do. This thing weighs 75 pounds. Nothing going to be left standing. So, by the way, then, men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail, since the plague was exceeding great. Yes? Okay. All right, now, you pick it up from there in the narrative in chapter 19. I'm not going to go there now. Chapter 17, the judgment on the great harlot and that mystery of iniquity uh, and uh, we'll talk about that we'll get into it now and chapter 18 uh, Babylon destroyed any questions comments admonitions rebukes exhortations yes so you all understood all that very clearly yeah well don't put me in that number Okay, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Be thankful. You're not in that. You're not in that. I am, I am pre -trub, a pre-trib. I am not pre-trouble. We can have some real trouble before we're translated. Think about things that Israel has gone through. Uh, before that day when God promised them redemption and it's coming. So uh, let us not be proud. Yeah, okay, let's pray. Let's pray. I'll shut up. Father, you're good. And we thank you that your judgments are right. You are righteous and you judge righteously. And so we put ourselves before you, our Father, in the days in which we live, and we pray your mercy upon us. We long for the coming of your Son, our Father, even so come, Lord Jesus. But our times are in your hands, and I know you love us, so you do what's well-pleasing in your sight. Amen. God bless you all.